I'm being walked to start the interpretation now. But... There's no one there to what? Do you want me to start it? Hmm? All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am Pamela Nolan Young, the director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here in town. And we are sponsoring a series of community forums on the establishment of the Resident Oversight Board. Uh, those conversations are going to be facilitated by Rabbi Deb Kolodny and assisting me today is Assistant Director of DEI, uh, Jennifer Moyston. So let me tell you just a little bit about Rabbi Deb. She has been, or they've been consulting since 1993 and has worked extensively in the fields of conflict transformation, workplace democracy, strategic planning, anti-hate work, restorative and racial justice, community data collection, and the field of DEI. They bring extensive experience in police accountability from years of work in Portland, Oregon. First as a participant in a clergy group that met with police leaders and the mayor every two weeks to address community concerns. Then as a founder and leader in Portland United Against Hate, a coalition of BIPOC and LGBTQ plus and religious minorities documenting providing trauma-informed care and seeking prevention of any outrageous level of hate. In this role, Deborah created reports that chronicled police violence against protesters and lobbied both the city council and state legislature about police accountability for their actions. Since moving to Amherst, Deborah has joined our Human Rights Commission and is providing training to the school district to support transgender and non-binary students. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela. And thank you, Jennifer, for doing our tech. And thank you to the interpreters um, who are on uh, call. If anyone needs Spanish or Mandarin interpretation. So um, as people, if people come in, I'm not sure if there's a way for them to register. Obviously, if they're in the room, they can just like let us know. Um, we also, I wanna say we have two representatives of Cress in the room. Um, you can't be seen on camera right now, I don't think, but um, the reason they have made the time today to come is that we know that talking about experiences with police, especially if they have been difficult um, or unpleasant, can be incredibly stressful. And so they're on call right here to be available for you um, if you have, uh, if you decide that things are stressing you up and you want to have a, a kind and compassionate heart to connect with. So as Pamela said, I'm Deb Kolodny. I've been working in the field of police accountability for many years now, although um, much more extensively in Portland, Oregon than here. Um, and I want to give a little bit of introduction to what we're going to be doing today. Most of our time is going to be devoted to hearing from folks who are who um, have come to tell your stories. So we've got, I think, one participant in the room at this moment and two participants on Zoom. Is that right, Jennifer, in addition to the uh, interpreters? So um, we may not be here for two hours um, because we're just gonna, we're not gonna stretch us ourselves to fill the time, um, but we'll, we'll definitely be able to hear everybody who came. Would you be so kind, Jennifer, as to put the PowerPoint up? starting with the first slide. All right, so um, this conversation about police accountability has been happening in the town of Amherst for several years. Um, there were two committees that have done extensive work in evaluating what the community's experiences have been with the police and what our next steps should be. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The reason that we're here today and we're gonna have three more sessions is because the town was really interested in hearing from as many people as possible um, about their experiences so that the data would be as robust and as um, extensive as we could generate. So next slide, please. Um, 
the agenda for today. You've already heard a welcome from Pamela Young. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history in just a second. Um, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna set up some ground rules before you share um, your stories. And then after you share your experiences, we'll ask you what you uh, would like to be different about how the Amherst Police Force works and then hear from you about what you would like to see in a resident oversight board. You'll get a little bit more information before you speak, don't worry, so you'll have some context and background. And then thanks and farewell. Um, next slide, please. The guidelines for today. Oh, can you see that? That's a real, I'll have to remember not to put something on blue. That's a hard read. Um, we're information gathering here today. We won't be debating each other or even responding to each other. Everyone's encouraged to participate. Everyone who wants to speak will have the opportunity to do so and we'll go back and forth between the room and the Zoom. When you speak, you can state your name and where you live if you want, or you can be anonymous and we'll only have one person speaking at a time. All right, quick check-in, any questions so far? Anybody raising their hand on Zoom in Zoomlandia? All right, so a little bit of history. Years ago, about three or four years ago, Amherst commissioned a group called the Community Safety Working Group to make recommendations on different ways of providing public safety services. And their task was to make recommendations and reform uh, to the current organizational and oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. Specifically, they were charged with studying the complex, complex issues of delivering community safety services to ensure racial equity, and they collected data from people's experiences, engaging the community's most impacted folks um, to see about alternatives to policing and identify solutions to diagnose problems. From their work, you may have heard of CRESS. I just introduced a couple of people here in the room, uh, which is an alternatives to policing uh, department that is here to serve folks who are uh, who might be in mental health uh, crisis or who have needs that the police really are not designed to address but have historically been, um, been engaged with. And um, they also said that we should have a DEI office, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion office. And we have the two members of that office right here, Pamela and Jennifer. So, um, and they also talked about a youth um, community center, which is something that's still pending. Um, in addition to that, if you could go to the next slide. Um, specifically, the ch because the charge of this group was to dismantle racism in any way it could, it focused, it prioritized its conversations with people who are BIPOC in the BIPOC community and did extensive connection outreach with folks who are BIPOC leaders and um, had a commitment to increasing the power and voice of BIPOC residents in this town. If you could go to the next slide. Oh, I went ahead of myself. The, <laughs> the um, CSWG issued two reports. And the first, as I said, called for creating a CRESS um, service and a resident oversight board. And that's what we're gonna take a little bit of time talking about today. Um, a DEI office, a youth, um, Empowerment Center and a BIPOC Cultural Center. And they also made the, a couple of other recommendations. One was to reduce the Amherst Police Department to 43 officers and hire no additional officers until Crest was fully operational. And then continue the ongoing work of the Community Safety Working Group. The second report, if you would go to the next slide, Jennifer, please, um, was, uh, had several, many, many more recommendations. And the first was to create a community safety and social justice committee, which has been functioning since, um, at, at, since after June 30th, 2021, establish this resident oversight board, um, review the Amherst Police Department use of force policy, prohibit uh, police department consent searches in vehicles, prohibit uh, police department low-level and pretextual traffic stops at checkbox um, to vehicle report form and um, several other recommendations. You could take a look at these slides. And I, I will say that this is just a sampling. When I read through all the reports, um, 
they had basically, this committee had covered every possible intervention um, that I've ever seen in community um, accountability police work. So they were incredibly, incredibly thorough. The next slide, please. This details the scope of the advisory board, um, what their work would be. Um, they could receive, their recommendation is that they could receive complaints from members of the public, conduct hearings, um, hire professional investigators to, uh, as needed, uh, recommend discipline, supervision, and training for officers, recommend mediation for complainants and officers, have the authority to subpoena witnesses and documents and be represented on the interview committee um, that is now um, being created to, um, to hire a new police chief and other high level positions. So their recommendations was a very, very extensive, robust um, resident oversight board. And I will say that around the country, um, that's a rare model. The vast majority of the oversight boards have much less much less authority. All right, so that's how we got here today. Um, since the board, um, these, these recommendations were made, the state of Massachusetts came up with a new data collection system called POST. And um, you can go to their website. No, if you could go to the next slide, please, Jennifer. You could go to their website and learn about how their process works for adjudicating complaints, read their reports. You can file a complaint against a police officer. The next slide, please. View officer disciplinary records and law enforcement status of um, each officer, and then view decisions and orders and reviews when complaints have been made. All right, lots of words because there's been lots of history. Your citizen representatives have been awesome and amazing. And now we're here, we're here now for you to have the opportunity to share what your experiences have been um, with the Amherst Police Department. So I'm gonna take a breath and ask if anybody has any questions or comments before we move to the next um, phase of our conversation. Maybe you could go to the next slide too. So the way we're gonna do this um, is that I'm gonna hand out surveys to people in the room so you could take a look and read through the kinds of information we'd love to get from you. Um, what language would you prefer? Spanish, English, or Mandarin? Okay. Would you like a survey? All right, Spanish, English, or Mandarin? And I'm gonna give the folks on, um, the folks who are online, who are on Zoom, if you could share your screen, Jennifer, and put up the flyer so that people could go to the survey that's online and they could also see the questions. Yes. <laughs> but only one. <laughs> For those of you on Zoom, there's a QR code on the bottom of the flyer that's listed. If you could use that, that would be great. Thank you. So I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to read through the survey. And actually, you know, it would be ideal is if you actually filled out the survey so that I could collect them and then I don't have to rewatch this. <laughs> and transcribe it, which will be harder for me. And you will make sure that every word that you want to be communicated is communicated if you, if you fill this out. So yeah, take a few minutes and then we'll hear from folks what their experiences have been like. Both the survey online and the survey in your hand can be totally anonymous if you want it to be, or you could leave your name if you'd rather do that. And the same is true for when you speak in the room. You can share your name or not, up to you.
So I think maybe we can move into hearing from folks. And um, are you comfortable going first? All right, I'm gonna hand this to you, otherwise we go on. To... Hi, my name is Vera Duangmini Cage. Okay, sure. Hi, my name is Vera Duangmini Cage. I actually have a incident um, to share that occurred yesterday at the former um, Hickory Ridge Golf Course area that's now owned by the town of Amherst. I actually want to play this video um, just to share with you straight from BIPOC youth what their experience is of late and this particular youth and the other youth that were there um, were also, um, have also experienced throughout their childhood, um, these different interactions with the police that are not um, savory to say the least. So um, let me just play this since I hope it comes clear to the audience, hold on. What's your badge number? 104? What's your badge number? 104? I'm just here, we're gonna take pictures and he's targeting me, saying I reek a weed. Yeah, I'm a victim, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, yeah, whatever. That's fucking crazy, bro. What's your badge number again? I gave it to you once. What do you want me to write it down for you? This is insane. Everyone's the same. Every every cop I meet from Amherst Police Department, we're talking about Nagel, Casey Nagel. He's a fucking... The same thing, this, he's, a, he's one of you, he's one of you, because no. you do look high. So, um, basically, the boys were, or young men, um, they were parked, they met up at the Hickory Ridge um, parking lot. It was a nice day, as you all recall yesterday, it was a very nice, sunny day. Um, in the 50s, and they were there to shoot video um, to upload to their social media. And as um, they were talking to each other via cell phone, one of the young adult male said, the police is pulling up behind you. And so that was the video that I just shared of that young man who was um, had that interaction with the police. And his voice sounds very exasperated. And I think um, it's because this young man has had horrible experiences with the Amherst police. He was a young man that was interrogated at the police station without his parents. Um, and, you know, these are individuals that you're probably not going to hear from, um, that you're, that's not going to fill out this paper survey, that's not going to scan the QR code to submit their survey about an, a bad incident, because this has been normal for them since growing up here in their own town of Amherst. Um, so my friend who um, passed away September 11th, um, one of her passions was advocating for young people. And she did so with such heart and such passion as if she was a mother to all of these kids that have no voice in this town. 
So I sit here to share another incident with the Amherst police. Um, but if the status quo continues, these voices won't be heard and their wishes won't be carried out because and unless the people who hold the power and the privilege step aside and allow their voices to carry through. Thank you. We wanted to uh, submit the video to us so that we could have that for our files. That would be great. Um, I think that there is an email address to you. All right. So either one of you. So is, I don't have your email address. Off. Is it P. Young or? OK. Young, as in the age, young P um, at Amherst.gov or Moiston J at Amherst.gov? AmherstMA.gov. Also, before you leave, I'm going to find my own card and give that to you. I, I don't remember things that are said I need to have. Thank you for sharing. Um, thank you for sharing that. I know that I'm also um, very uh, open and would uh, consider it an honor um, if there was a place um, to meet with young people, especially so that their voices definitively got heard you know, outside of these, you know, outside of town hall, if that feels intimidating or something like that. So I'd be very happy to speak with you about that. Thank you for coming. All right, we're going to alternate between the room and Zoom. So um, if there's somebody on Zoom right now who'd like to share a story, uh, if you could raise your hand and Jennifer will pull you onto the screen. See if anybody's raising their hand who wants to speak. Nobody is raising your hand to speak. All right. We've got uh, somebody else in the room here. Would you like to share? Not yet. All right. So um, there's another two questions that we have in addition to incidents. And so if nobody on Zoom wants to contribute, what I'm going to recommend is just ask this question. There are two more questions. Um, what would you like to see from Amherst Police? And you've already said that. Um, <laughs> treat the youth with respect is certainly what I heard. But if there's a specific answer, um, more specific than what you shared in your story that you'd like to offer up. And um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the resident oversight board or if you have any thoughts about what uh, authority it should have or how it should function. Um, they should be able to request the board to um, anonymous or So not only named complainants. Mm -hmm. There should be some um, assurance for people who are vulnerable population that there will be suppressed retaliation. Now, people don't speak up because they're vulnerable in so many different areas, whether it's Immigration status, whether it's being court involved or legally involved, whether it's a house or family members, loved ones. So people fear for their safety and their livelihood. So we need to figure out how to protect vulnerable populations. 
Got it. I'm going to repeat that a little bit shorter, probably, so everybody on Zoom can also hear it. Um, the Resident Oversight Board should accept credible uh, anonymous complaints and make sure that however the process works, those who are, are in vulnerable populations can be assured that there would be no retaliation and um, vulnerable, vulnerable groups include um, those with a variety of immigration statuses, those who are court involved, um, and, you know, anybody, youth certainly, you know, also <laughs> categorize any, anybody who has, um, a history of, uh, even arrest, not even in incarceration. So anybody with a history in the criminal justice system, anything else you want to add? Okay. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, can you see if anybody on Zoom wants to contribute, uh, answers to those questions? Nope. All right. Well, we have uh, one more person in the room who's writing quite a lot. Are you ready to? Okay. So we don't have an agenda to fill the space. Um, at this point, um, is there a hand up in Zoom? There is. All right, we're gonna hear from a Zoom user, thank you. Just barely. Yes, hello. I am uh, actually en route to Town Hall. I'm uh, about to park. I was hoping to actually come in person and uh, wanting to thank everyone for this work of these listening sessions. And um, so, anyway, if I make it there in time, I'll, I'll be there momentarily. Great. So if you didn't hear that, I was a little um, sketchy. Someone is en route. They are walking here at this moment. Hope to be here in person and share more then. All right. While we're waiting um, for that person and the person in the room, I'm getting you my card. So for the, I think, two people um, besides the interpreters and the person who's walking, who's making their way here, um, I just want to make sure, since it looks pretty clear we're not going to be here until 4 o'clock, that um, this is really your moment if you have the inclination to share an experience um, or that you either had yourself personally or that you witnessed, either way. And it could be an experience uh, that happened yesterday, as we just saw, it could be an experience that happened years ago. We didn't put a time um, limit, a historical time limit on this. Um, I think there should be also thought and consideration around how and who will assemble the resident oversight board um, because it is a, a serious duty. And um, so that process needs to be transparent and um, people, residents should be able to um, say 
who should be, you know, representing them in that body. Um, and they should have investigative authority. Um, and whether it's to interview police officers or um, seek discovery of evidence and such. Um, so I, I think if this is going to be um, done the right way, I think that there should be some contributions from the public about who and how um, this body will be assembled by it. Thank you so much. I'm not going to repeat that because you all heard it from the microphone, but I will um, add that the recommendation included that I think it'd be a five member board and that four to five people be BIPOC from the BIPOC community. I don't remember reading the process, so I'm going to get this all up here right now. <laughs> All right, I put up input from community on who serves on ROB and they should have the capacity to investigate and do discovery. Do you work in the legal profession? <laughs> but you know what discovery is. <laughs> Excellent. Do you feel ready to share? Okay. Okay. So there will be a point I think at which we'll call the meeting to a close if there aren't other people who want to share or um, person who is coming here, you know, um, we'll certainly wait for that person. Um, and it's, I see you've been writing quite a lot. So we'll certainly take your written report, but um, I hope you're ready, I guess is what I want to say to share before we end up closing. Yeah. My name is Deborah Kolodny, and I'm fairly new to town. I got here about two and a half years ago. I serve on the Human Rights Commission now, and I came here to Amherst with an extensive background in police accountability work, first um, in Portland, Oregon, first as a clergy person who met on the regular with police officers there to address community-based concerns, and then as a person who was a founder and a leader in a coalition called Portland United Against Hate. And that was a coalition of all targeted communities. So immigrants, refugees, LGBTQI plus people, BIPOC people, um, Jews and Muslims. Um, and one of the things that we learned is that, uh, I'll tell a few stories. Um, at the time when I started that work, the FBI and police combined said there were 10 hate incidents that had occurred in the year before. We, we launched a community-based uh, data collection tool that people could respond to anonymously. And once it was up and running, we were getting 200 complaints a year to give an example of like what people feel safe doing and what people feel comfortable doing. Um, so we were recording that kind of data. And then when, um, after the George Floyd murder, when uh, the racial reckoning hit Portland, Oregon, as it hit here, we turned that instrument into a vehicle for collecting data on police violence against residents in Portland. And we did a report and community learning sessions about it, and we lobbied and um, got some movement around, as has already happened here, around the development of CRESS. Um, we, we called the Portland equivalent, equivalent was called Portland Street Response. So that's just a little bit about me. I have a law degree, but I haven't used it in a very, very, very long time. <laughs> and I'm assuming, are you the gentleman who called in? Excellent. So thank you so much. We're glad you're here. You just heard me uh, introducing myself a little bit. I'm Deborah. Are you ready to share what you'd like to, what you came to share? Thank you. So much. Thank you, uh, Assistant Director uh, Jennifer Moyston. Director Pamela Nolan Young. Uh, so glad to um, have this opportunity to uh, speak for a moment 
to the um, uh, our, our efforts on behalf of what we're referring to as a resident oversight board. Um, this is um, something that in the uh, immediately in the wake of the uh, tragic murder of George Floyd, uh, that many of us really were most um, engaged and concerned about of the many, many things that we express concerns about, which um, I'm proud to say we've seen our town hear, listen, and act upon, such as the creating of an Office of uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, such as the creation of a program like CRESS, um, and, and even now having these hearings toward engaging with um, uh, uh, the establishing uh, some type of accountability uh, and, and critical engagement system for um, residents of our town with our, uh, with our police department. Um, there were many voices in those times crying out. Um, some uh, were crying out uh, with the cry of abolition. Um, abolition of the police is an idea that, uh, especially in academia, um, has uh, gained uh, quite a bit of credibility, and, uh, and many people are engaged in pointing out the research that, that uh, sustains such an idea. But, um, but of course, here there was a considerable counter-reaction to, to even just that, the, the bare mention of that idea. Um, but I only mention this to say that there's been a been quite a spectrum of of opinions on these matters. For some of us that recommended uh, what we're referring to as a resident oversight board, we saw it as a middle ground, a middle ground between an actual abolition of the Amherst Police Department and the current way in which we attempt to provide community safety and public safety to scrap this current system. Um, and, uh, and, and doing nothing, that somewhere in between that, that measure uh, and, and doing do, status quo, we, we came up with this as an idea. The particular term that um, I was most drawn to was commission, was calling for a commission on police practices. Uh, I was particularly called to that by the example of what I observed going on in San Diego, California. Um, my uh, my cousin, my first cousin, was uh, who was an attorney, uh, was one of the uh, leading forces there in San Diegans for Justice that was calling for a commission for police practices. And interestingly, in their case, they went the route of a uh, of a town referendum. They had an actual through the the city charter, not town, but through the charter of the city of San Diego. Uh, they were able to get on the ballot a measure in which the citizens of San Diego was actually able to register support for the creation of a commission on police practices. They, they created an outline of what the commission would look like, what the kinds of powers they were talking about. They did a lot of this kind of listening and educational work, and, uh, and they put it before the voters, and the voters strongly supported um, uh, the creation of such a commission on police practices. Um, and so that's the term that I adopted and that was the direction that I was I particularly advocated. But folks here were like, well, we don't necessarily need a charter initiative uh, or go to the charter and do a townwide vote on, on such a thing. We can do it internally. And so we see three years later, we're still working on it internally. Uh, and so um, hopefully then as we go into 2024, we will be redoubling our efforts. We will look at the array of, um, of recent iterations of the kinds of things we're looking for here in other places. I hope particularly we'll look at San Diego and what, what they've um, uh, have come up with and are continuing to work on and implement. But uh, we, we critically need this. And the reason we need this is that problems of, pol uh, of, of, of our policing system um, aren't episodic. The, uh, the commentary that Vera Doamini Cage has made and the video uh, that, that sh uh, she has shared and, and, and we see the, the incident just on yesterday, this is not episodic. This is just an ongoing feature of our society, of our levels of, of uh, 
uh, concern in the public about what it means to have an encounter with the police. Not everybody is going to just, you know, uh, uh, take things with open arms. Oh, the police are here. Thank you, Lord. And, you know, but but might have different reactions. And then the question becomes, how do we handle those interactions? And are we looking at de-escalating or are we escalating? And, and, and these then are common features that we need a system whereby, beyond just a complaint structure, but whereby um, incidents can be looked into, whereby there can be some, uh, some ability for the community to, um, to engage with the police on their standards and, and practices and, uh, uh, and, and hopefully influence change, lead to change. You know, the July 5th incident, despite all that happened and all that it took to even have a conversation on that, I still wonder whether we we've, we've actually have any uh, measurable uh, change in how we practice right now. If a call is made at midnight tonight about noise, how folks roll out and, and I mean, what is our response to that going to be in terms of a group of teenagers being outside waiting for someone to come and fix their flat? Um, so I, I really think this is something that in 2024, I hope and look forward to us making substantial progress on. It will make us safer, not less safe. It will ultimately benefit the police because now the police can have um, can hopefully begin to work toward a greater degree of legitimacy and a greater degree uh, 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 and a wider degree of acceptance in the community uh, from all parts of the community, understanding that, yes, there is there's, is a tough job, but that, hey, when um, certain things, uh, blind spots, implicit bias, explicit biases come into play, that people are able to have those incidents really looked at and have things really addressed in a way that we can all uh, 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 not see re a repeat of it and not see anything uh, such as what has happened in Minneapolis and other places ever, ever, ever happen here in Amherst. That's our goal. That's what, and I think that's what we can accomplish if we stay the course on this and uh, and, and and move forward with the uh, 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 um, what this listening session is designed. I hope to to get us toward. Thank you. Thank you so much. You didn't tell us your name. You can be anonymous, but if you want to share your name, that'd be great. No question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shabazz. And um, was there a specific incident that you wanted to reference that you had your, your own personal experience with the police to share today? Um, not, not personally. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. So because the folks on Zoom didn't hear that, I'll just really briefly say you don't have a specific incident. Um, there, there was one in 2007. It might have been with the UMass police. Um, and you're in discussions right now with the interim police chief about an initiative that you're feeling positive about. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Um, Jennifer, can we check in again with the folks on Zoom to see if anybody wants to share or they're still being shy? Yeah, so on Zoom, in Zoomlandia, if you'd like to share, would you please raise your hand? And you can have the floor. All right, going once, going twice. Um, how are you feeling? Are you feeling ready to share? You could also just submit what you wrote and not share verbally. It's totally up to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
All right, it's totally up to you. And again, you could also just submit whatever you wrote if that would be better for you, whatever you want, whatever works for you. All right, I don't see any hands up on the screen. So in addition to the questions about individual incidents, we had questions about the resident oversight board and what you wanna see from the police, which I guess it's Professor Shabazz has already spoken to quite eloquently. Um, so all three questions are up for you, um, for those in Zoom land, if you wanna share. I'm always amazed when people come to just listen. It's like, what a public service to just come and listen. <laughs> I will say that as preparation for my time here, I spoke with three people who were members of the CSWG. Yes, I got the acronym right. Oh. Um, yeah, so I got a, a wonderful introduction to the history of the work. And um, I also read all the reports. And I just want to say that there's like dozens of recommendations specifically about how the police operations, so standards and operations, uh, which look great, totally state of the art, you know, on police accountability and oversight. So uh, the work that's been done to date has been incredibly sophisticated, thorough, um, impressive. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say that I don't see any more hands on Zoom. I think the people in the room who've said they're ready to talk have spoken. This is your last call. Speak now or hand in your paper and whichever one you'd like. If you wanna speak, let me give you the mic. Well, not now's the time. So it's either now or never to speak and you could always hand in the paper. You'll pass? Is that it? Yeah, all right. Well, I wanna thank those who came. I don't wanna hold you, keep you any longer um, because you've said your piece and we really appreciate your input. Um, you're still here, Pamela. So do, would you like to give a goodbye and Jennifer can also say a few words of thanks. The uh, director of our DEI office, I think Jennifer, you could also say a few words. And I wanna thank, since I'm gonna hand this over, I'm not gonna take the mic again, I wanna thank the interpreters for coming, even though we didn't end up having a need, having access um, for folks who are uh, Mandarin speaking and Spanish speaking is critical, even if folks don't opt in. So thank you, great to have you here. Hi, I'll just close by saying uh, thank you for those uh, people who were able to join us here in person um, and online. Also, thank you to the interpreters. I think it's really important that folks know that we have three more opportunities uh, for folks to, to share their story and have input, and there will be uh, interpretation services at those three events. Oh, one more. At next one on January. Okay, interpretation services at the next event in January. You reminded me of something. There are flyers. So for those who came, I want you to go home with some flyers and give them to people who you know. So the more stories, the more voices, the more uh, effective this work can be. Um, so yeah, so please spread the word. I'm gonna um, uh, pass to the... Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. And of course, thank the UMass Translation Center, Translate to Educate, we so appreciate. Um, you guys joining us and helping us get through this as we all learn how to navigate with the translation, which is crucial for us to continue to have. Um, and I would like to say have a good afternoon and we hope to see some of you again on the 10th of January and as well as some new faces. Thank you and have a great afternoon. <laughs>